In the OpenStax textbook, this is chapter four, number 49. Now, there are a whole bunch of words in this problem. I'm not, I'm not gonna waste your time reading it all to you. It's an online textbook. You can read it right there. What I did is I summarized everything for you. Hopefully you've already tried number 49 on your own and you're just clicking on this video uh, to see how I did it. If you haven't, go ahead and pause it right now and try this on your own and see how far you get before you get stumped and then watch this video. Okay, so now that you've tried it on your own, um, in this problem I summarized the given information into this little spot right here. It tells us the mass of the elevator, and in part A it's accelerating upwards for 1.5 seconds. In part B it's moving at a constant velocity. In part C it's decelerating for 3 seconds. And in part D they wanted us to find the total distance that it had traveled. So, for part A, the first thing we needed to find was the tension in that Cable. Well, the one formula that's going to help me out for the first three parts of this problem is Newton's second law. It doesn't seem like that much at first. Um, what I need to do is I need to take that formula, label all the forces that are going on right here, and then go back to this formula. And I'll show you how that works for parts A, B, and C. I would look at that elevator and think there's two forces acting on it. Weight is pulling straight down, tension is pulling straight up. Now I'm in the habit of always calling the up direction positive. So I'm gonna call the tension an upward force so it'll be positive, so weight will be negative in these problems. So I go back to Newton's second law and I say, well the sum of the forces is how much the mass accelerates and those forces actually are tension and weight. I called tension positive because it's up, weight negative because it's downward. Believe it or not, that's enough to solve part A. I plug in the mass, plug in the acceleration, and I don't know if you use 10 for gravity, it's actually 9.8, but I just round it up to 10. And that's it, throw it into my calculator and it turns out that the tension for part A is 19,040 newtons. All right, now just to save a little space on the board, I'm gonna put that answer over here, erase that, and solve part B. Okay, we're back, part B. Um, it doesn't give us any acceleration. It says it's moving at a constant velocity. So when I go back up to this formula, I can plug in zero. That's its net acceleration. It's a little tricky because it's actually moving at 1.8 meters per second, but it's not accelerating. So it's the exact same problem. I just don't have to plug in a number right there. The sum of the forces, tension pulls up, weight pulls down. Since these two add together and make zero, I know that the tension has to be equal to the weight. So, for part B, the tension, 17,000 newtons. For part C, it slows down, and sometimes in these problems it helps me to imagine that I'm on an elevator. When you get on an elevator, you push the button, and as soon as it goes from rest to moving, it changed its velocity, that's acceleration. So if you're about to accelerate upward, you feel a little bit heavier. While you're moving at a steady velocity, your weight feels exactly the same. That's why the tension and the weight are the same right here. This is where it slows down. That would be that moment right as you come to a stop. You feel a little bit lighter. I'll show you why that happens. You just go back to the exact same formula. Only this time I do have some acceleration. It's decelerating, so I'm plugging in a negative number right there. So, threw that into my calculator, it turns out the tension for part C is almost 16,000 newtons. It's less than the weight. So, if I look at this and think, well, does that make any sense? If I had a tension that pulled upwards of like 16,000 and weight pulling downward at 17,000, it would seem like it's accelerating in the down direction, which is what happens here. It's just strange because it's moving upward but slowing down. That technically means it is accelerating in the down direction, so that answer makes sense. All right, the last part of this problem, it is an excellent review of all the kinematics formulas that we had so far. It wants to know the total distance traveled. 
Well, we can't just use one simple formula because parts A, B, and C, different things are happening. Part A, it's speeding up. Part B, it's moving in a steady velocity. Part C, it's slowing down. So I need to find the distance it traveled each time separately. So excellent practice, bunch of different ways to solve this. You might find one way to do it that's a whole lot easier than mine. If so, send me an email. I always like to learn little shortcuts. But here's how I solved it. I thought if I need to find the total distance, I'm going to have to find the distance that traveled in part A, the distance that traveled in part B, and the distance that traveled in part C, and add all those together. All right, so let's just start right here. We know the elevator starts from rest and accelerates upward for 1.5 seconds, so I used this formula. Didn't have any initial velocity, so I don't have to plug anything in there. I knew the time and I knew the acceleration. It turns out that the distance for the first part using that formula got me 1.35 meters. For part B, it's moving at a steady velocity, but I didn't know what steady velocity that was, so I had to go find that first. So I went back to what I knew about part A, and I thought, well, All I know is the acceleration and the time. It started with an initial velocity of zero, so this comes out to be a final velocity of 1.8 meters per second. So although that's not its final, it's the final for part A, and then it continues to move that speed the whole time for 8.5 seconds. So for part B, I found the distance using this formula. I said the average velocity is the displacement over time, so therefore the displacement is the average velocity times time, and that gave me a total distance of 15.3 meters. Almost done, one more, and then we'll just add them all together and we'll be done with number 49. The displacement for part C. I went back and used the exact same formula that I did for part A. I need to find the displacement. I know acceleration, time, and velocity, so I could find out the displacement for part C. Don't forget the negative sign on that acceleration. Three seconds passed. Whew, we did it. We found the distance for part A and B and C. For part C, I got 2.7 meters added all those together for you and for a total displacement for the entire trip on that elevator I got 19.35 meters. If I'd paid a little bit more attention to my significant figures I might have rounded that to 19.4 but if you were exact then we should have got a number really close. There you go that's how you do number 49 I'll see you in the next video.